Hi, welcome to our ProV Academy series on tech terms, where we sit down with Alistair Chapman and chat through some of the technical terms that just come up again and again in this industry. Alistair is one of the best people I know at explaining complex technical concepts. So hopefully, just by casually chatting with him each one of these terms through, these videos can just help clear up some of the confusion that might be out there on each of these terms. Today, we're talking about diffraction and how you need to keep it in mind when changing your camera settings. So one thing people run into a lot is diffraction, particularly yes. with small sensors and fixed lenses and things like that. It's a very common issue, but I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about it overall and a lot of people with larger sensors just think it's something they don't need to worry about at all. Yes. Let's go over diffraction a little bit, what it is and how we can, we can yes, get around so, it. So diffraction is essentially becoming more and more of a problem as we go to ever higher mm. resolution. Mm. Um, obviously sensor size and all plays a part in it. But the, the core um, of the issue is that contrary to what we're often told at school, etc., is that light doesn't always travel in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> so when light passes over a very sharp edge, it actually bends. So if you've got a, a, a sharp edge and the light goes across it, it bends a little bit. It's just like if you run, run the tap and you put your finger into the edge of the stream of water that comes out of the tap, it wraps its, the water wraps itself around your finger. Now with lenses with a very big aperture, you have a tremendous amount of light going through the middle that's all focused nicely by the glass onto the sensor and that's all fine, lovely. Um, but you have a relatively small amount of light right on the edge of that aperture ring that's getting defocused and bent. Um, but because the aperture is very big, 99% of your light's going through the middle, completely swamps any defocused light, doesn't cause you any problems. But as your aperture becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, you've your ratio of focused light to light hitting the edge of this aperture ring that becomes defocused decreases. So you might have 50% of your light that's focused correctly and 50% of it that isn't. And it's this defocused light that becomes a problem. And it becomes more of a problem as your pixels get smaller. So if your pixels are huge, your light can be defocused quite a bit and still fall on the pixel you want it to fall on. Gotcha. But if your pixel is really tiny, that same amount of defocusing of the light means instead of falling on the pixel that you want it to, it falls on the one next door or the one two pixels away, whatever. So as you increase, and the, the correct technical term would be is you um, make the pixel pitch smaller. Mm -hmm. So as the pixels become closer and closer together, which is normally due to the pixels themselves becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, this becomes more of a problem. So as we go up in resolution, it becomes more of a problem, or as we go down in pixel, uh, in sensor size, it becomes more of a problem. In general terms, with um, a half inch sensor, so a lot of cameras have half inch sensors, at uh, 4K, or uh, at 4K, you're gonna hit a problem at about f6.3. So any smaller than that with your aperture, and the light will be defocused, and turning the focus ring makes no difference, it doesn't help. So your picture will be softer and softer and softer. And there's not much you can do about it. You can't fix it sure. in post, you can't focus the, the camera to focus it out. So what, what do you do about it? So you have to basically open your aperture up. You just shoot within the yes. so that's, open to 6.3. Yeah, so that's half inch sensor, 6.3, 4K, uh, HD, it's about F, Eight, so you don't want to be at f11, f16 with a half inch sensor. Mm -hmm. Third inch sensor um, becomes even worse. So you definitely, you know, 4K third inch sensor, 6.3 is, is somewhat borderline. Definitely don't want to be more close than that. Um, as we come up in sensor size, so uh, one inch sensor, 4K, um, about f8. But that's if it's 4K pixels. Of course, we've got to remember that one inch sensors have a lot more than 4K of pixels on them. Mm. So the problem happens earlier. And actually that's why a lot of the cameras now that come out, even the small palm corders and handy cams have built in ND filters. Mm -hmm. And it's not just to give you the ability to have an ND filter, which is nice anyway, but it's so that you don't have to use very small apertures because very small apertures aren't gonna help you. Sure. Um, 
Super 35 camera, one of the most common sensor sizes, 4K or greater, then we don't want to be at f16, f22. The, your image is going to be soft, so you want to be at f11. So you really have to work with your ND filters, either whether, whether that's built into the camera and bring in more ND to have a bigger aperture or add ND in front of the lens to have a bigger aperture. So this is one of the challenges of working really with any camera is finding the sweet spot for the combination of sensor and lens and everything else that you're using. You know, very often lenses aren't great when they're wide, wide open. You know, sometimes stopping down a little bit will help you know, give you a sharper image. And then at the same time, because of the diffraction issues, you don't want to be too stop down either because your image goes soft again. So there'll always be a range in the middle where things tend to be at their best. And typically you're going to be looking for an, an average lens that, that sort of f4, f5.6 tends to be from a sharpness, so from sharpness alone point of view, sure. where you might want to be. But that's not going to be the same for every lens, it will vary a bit. Um, but never really, really small and depends on the lens, perhaps not as wide as really it can really always wide. go. So are we going to find this becomes more and more obvious as we move up towards higher resolutions, as we go to 6K, 8K and above? Are we going to find that we're going have, kind to of have to rather f11 max turns into an f8 max for example absolutely it will yes and i think this is going to be one of the issues going forwards you know there's a lot of talk about 8k at the moment and moving to 8k and higher resolutions and i think there's a lot of issues around going to these higher resolutions on the sensors in so much as yes diffraction will be one another will be m manufacturing lenses that can resolve at those sorts of levels anyway um, then there's the question of real world texture as well. Do those real world textures and details actually exist at mm -hmm. 8K capture? So um, I, I personally, I think 4K to 6K is kind of a sweet spot where we are right now. Going beyond that is going to get more and more expensive. Optically, it's going to become very expensive um, for very little return and gain unless you're talking of absolutely gigantic screens with extremely high resolution projection or other processes to d display these images. So it's would, interesting. Would it, if you're downsampling in post, does that change anything at all? No. We're talking about shooting for 4K. It's the same whether you're delivering in 4K okay. or 1080p. So, so downsampling in post doesn't affect the diffraction, but of course, if you're only going to view in HD, you might not be able to see the softening that the diffraction okay. is adding. So in 4K, yeah. you might notice, oh, this isn't as soft, or sorry, this isn't as sharp as it is if I close the aperture down a bit. Yep. Uh, but then you go to HD because the image resolution is lower, you can't see that small difference anymore, so it looks the same. Yep. So HD is more forgiving, diffraction is less of an issue with HD because you're not, not able to see those differences. Yeah, okay, fascinating. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Keep in mind, we also do a whole range of Pro AV Academy workshops held right here in our UK showroom, where we cover a whole range of topics, from audio to post-production, camera techniques, business tips, lighting tips, and many more. The main aim of these workshops is to help our customers learn and develop their skills. And there's something about face-to-face -face training which can just never be replaced by videos like this one. So if you're in the UK, please do get a ticket from the link down below and join us for Pro AV Academy.